Okay, so here's an intimidating looking problem, but we will break it down piece by piece. First of all, it says if a is not zero, so this means a can't be zero. Right, that's what we're establishing right here. If a can't be zero and the sum of x and one plus a, so I want to write this down. So x, oops, x plus one over a. I'm going to write that as an equation, plus one over a equals zero. So if I so they want to know what's true about this, well I'm just going to look at what I have so far. I have x, right, and I'm adding to one over a. I know that x plus a negative x is zero, right? Why? Because those two are they're the additive inverses or opposites of each other. And here I notice that I have x plus something is equal to zero. So therefore I know that what I know that one over a must be the equivalent of negative x. These things have to be equal. So 1 over a equals negative x. All right, that's what I have working here. So I look at my choices, and I don't see that exactly, right? Um, notice that here choice 3 is the closest. Now, choice 3 is actually equivalent. How do I know that? Well, if I multiply both sides of my equation by negative 1, what happens? 1 over a times negative 1 is negative 1 over a. And then negative x times negative 1 is just x. And notice that now it's looking closer to choice 3. I can change sides here in this equation. That's called the symmetric property. So x equals negative 1 over a. That's equivalent. I can swap those sides. And here you can see that we have choice 3. So even though this problem looks scary, if we just write it out as an equation and then step back and reflect, wow, what would be really nice about 1 over a? Well I, well, I know, or sorry, what would be really nice in this problem? x plus what equals 0? Well, it would be really nice if we had x plus negative x, and then we could just kind of substitute in 1 over a for, for negative x to realize those must be equivalent, and then we work from there. We kind of play around with the problem. Okay, thanks.